I'm Angus Clark, and this video right here is about Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. I've been collaborating with Keith Williams, who has a really successful YouTube channel called 5 Watt World. He needs some music for a video called A Short History of the Guitars of Tony Iommi, and we thought I'd be a pretty good person to do it because I'm so into Sabbath, I have a Tony Iommi replica guitar, and I have everything we need to make it sound awesome. I'm going to show you the guitars and tones I used and how I wrote the riffs in the style of Tony Iommi. Let's start with the guitars. First up, we've got my Gibson 2018 SG Special. I had been wanting a Tony Iommi style guitar for quite a while, but I was inspired by three separate guitars of his. First of all, I had volume four growing up and he's pictured with the monkey guitar on the gatefold. And so the dot inlays and the small pick guard, that had to be a part of the package. Second, the first time I saw Sabbath was on the Mob Rules Tour. And at that point he was either playing the black John Birch guitar or the old boy. So the nine screw humbuckers had to be part of it. And then third, as we move into the modern era, the really most legendary pictures of him are with the old boy. So that kind of faded finish had to be part of it as well. So when I was looking around at what's available as a Tony Iommi guitar, the Gibson ones are either the monkey guitar, which is either a $6,000 or $20,000 guitar. It doesn't have the humbuckers, so I'm not going to mod that. I'm not going to mod a $20,000 guitar. Or these signature models that are done with the chrome-covered full-sized humbuckers and the cross inlays and 24 frets, all of those things are disqualifying for me. So I was kind of stuck because I wanted to be Gibson and I wanted it to have all these features. So I was looking around for something I could get that would be at a price point where I could mod it. And when they came out with these SG specials in 2018, 2019, I thought, that's a good candidate. So I bought this one used on Reverb. It was Pelham Blue, but that didn't matter because I knew it was going to get stripped. I worked in collaboration with a guy named Joe Reggio, Reggio Guitars in Tacoma, Washington. Amazing refinisher, does amazing work. We took all the hardware off it, I sent it to him, and he's, we collaborated, we talked about it, and he did this to it. And it's just amazing. It's totally inspired by the old boy. It's got that signature fading up there, but you can't really maybe see it on the camera, but the cracking and the checking, even on the back, I mean, it is completely a work of art. It's amazing. So we did that, and then I ordered the pickups from JD Guitars. It's run by Andrew Diggins now. It took about four months to get the pickups, but they came in. Oh, and the bridge on the old boy is blades now, but I said, no, no, no. I want nine screws on both pickups. They did that, and then I took it to my tech here in New Jersey, Anthony Marcatelli. So it turns out these pickups are a non-standard size. They don't fit into the P90 routes, so it had to be routed Anyway, I replaced the bridge with this pigtail wrap around, and then the wiring is from Gun Street Wiring Shop, which do great work, and the tuners are these Cluson lightweight die cast, shallower style tuners. Put it all together, it's got nines on it in E flat. That's as light and as low as I wanted to go on this, and it came out great. I love it. It's what I used on the bulk of the track. Next up, we have my Gibson SG Special Tribute. Now, I explicitly put this guitar together in order to cover the Mob Rules material that has the dive bomb, the song Mob Rules, Voodoo. There's probably a couple other songs where he uses the Floyd Rose. And we know that Tony has a Gibson SG Custom with a real Floyd Rose installed. Now that is an expensive proposition for anybody, and to put a route up, to route a Floyd into an SG Custom is 
like verboten in most circles, but Tony can do whatever he wants to. And I wanted to have a guitar to cover that territory. So I got this guitar used on reverb. It's a lower end model from before Gibson management changed. So it's got a flat finish, but it's white and Tony's is white. So I thought that was a good fit. It has oddly large frets. There's a couple things about it that just are not super great, but it came with a bridge and tailpiece instead of a wraparound bridge. And you need that the tailpiece studs in order to mount the FRX, which is a top mounted Floyd that can go on any Gibson. So I got an FRX and I put it on this and then I just needed the pickups. And that's where I started talking to Sean Christopher from Pariah Pickups. If you don't know Pariah Pickups, great company. Sean is a great guy. And I told him what I wanted to do. Actually, he has a pickup called the Supernaut. And I said, is that your Iami? And he's like, yeah, that's the one. And I said, all right, well, can you make a mini humbucker version of it? And he said, sure, which is just awesome when people work with you. And so it's got two rows of screws. It's only six screws instead of nine, but that's great. It fits inside the mounting ring into the P90 route, no problem. And he's actually marketing this now as the mini knot. So if you want to do a project like this and you don't have the money and the time to get the, uh, the JD pickups, you can go for it with the mini knots from Pariah and they work great. And I used it on the solos and it sounds awesome. And this guitar is actually in C sharp with nines on it. So it is loosey goosey and it sounds awesome. So that's the 2018 SG special tribute. All right, so I've got guitars that'll fit the bill. What am I gonna do for an amp? Now I do have the Laney 30 watt version of the amp that they put out in the last couple of years. And I have a whole bunch of treble boosters. I have a Beano Boost and other ones. I even have Laney's Black Country Customs TI Boost, the Tony Iommi signature pedal. I also have the Tycho Brahe Para pedal, which is uh, supposed to be the one that Tony used. Um, and all that means is that I've got my ears pretty trained up for what the sound is supposed to feel like and sound like. But I'm going to use my Axe FX3 in order to actually cut it because it's just much more practical for a home studio. And I actually have an IOMI sound already programmed because I was working on it last year. So that's what I'm going to use and let's have a look at it. What we're looking at here is the Axe Edit 3 editor, which is plugged into my Axe Effects 3. This is the preset in the scene that I used for the whole piece. It's called Tony Live FM3 because it was originally designed on an FM3. You'll see there are only three blocks engaged. It's the amp, which is the 1959 SLP Jumped. The cab, which is the 412 Citrus with a 57 and a 160 and the drive box, which is the treble booster. Let's hear the amp without the drive box. A lot of thud. Let's hear it with the drive box. And that's it, that's the whole sound. Let's check out the riffs. The piece I wrote for this has four sections built out of three riffs, plus a little intro and an ending. The three riffs are all made using signature moves of Tony's, just combined in different ways so that it's recognizably Sabbath-esque, yet not exact replicas of anything from the Sabbath catalog. So let's take those riffs in turn. Here's the first one. <laughs> The effort here is to do something sort of Sabbath Bloody Sabbath slash Into the Void. Then kind of a syncopated descending pentatonic thing like Iron Man. Then it repeats the first thing again and then when it comes back it does something more akin to Snowblind or Heaven and Hell. That's the first riff. The second riff is moves to A, and in A I'm doing something that combines some of the flavor of 
Children of the Sea, Super Tsar, and Voodoo. And that riffs like this. <laughs> The third riff is a double time shuffle in D, which is kind of inspired by the shuffle section in Snowblind. I play it entirely on the bottom string, which really helps give it that Ayami sound. <laughs> Each of these riffs has some specific Tony Iommi move in it that is done in order to make it sound more Sabbathy. Whether it's the hammer on to the seventh fret E power chord in the first riff, or the hammer ons on the third and fourth strings at the fifth fret in the second riff, or the use of playing up high on the low string in the third riff. All of those are specifically done to make it sound more Sabbathy. There's only two other elements. It's the intro, which is specifically done on spec from Keith to be a big downbeat that sounds when the five watt world tube flash happens. And that's a war pigs fake out. And then at the end, I do a syncopated chromatic ascent into a bad ow to sound something like the ending of Iron Man. <laughs> descending into reverb, and that again, specifically on spec from Keith to uh, have this big reverb decay that he wanted. So that's it, those are all the riffs. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much to Keith Williams for having me be a part of the short history of the guitars of Tony Iommi. And above all, thank you to Tony Iommi just for all the music that he's given us and all the inspiration that he's given me personally. Everyone that collaborated with me on making those tribute guitars, Joe Reggio at Reggio Guitars, Sean Christopher Pariah Pickups, uh, Andrew Diggins, JD Guitars, and my tech, Anthony Marcatelli, for doing an amazing job putting it all together. It just means so much to me, the people that have worked with me when I just started getting into this passion project. Uh, thank you for checking out this video. Please leave a comment. I know everybody's experience with Sabbath and Tony Iommi's music is different. I love hearing the different perspectives. And there are links in the description here to the performance video, which is on my channel, and to Keith Williams' Short History of the Guitars of Tony Iommi. Have fun checking those out if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon.